Ça So we share 90, I mean, almost 99% of our genetic material with them. So they are our closest living ancestor. Les bonobos sont considérés chez nous comme un humain. Les bonobos sont considérés 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 ce qui va comme le bonobo na ba sente moko na bango akibelete a na kalisi batu ba yao aya ko tala ba donke après a zonga a signaler ba minga o mono le pai ata o mono ye musika ba ko na bisa ta ko sala boy yo fandi awa pesa mbongo na yo mpako ata ta musika yo kaka pou a kwena ba bele nous, nous avions des difficultés à faire admettre la présence des bonobos dans notre zone. Parce que pour les organismes de conservation, les bonobos ne se trouvent que dans la grande forêt équatoriale, au nord de notre zone. Et quand nous avions euh, informé les, les ONG internationales, elles ne nous ont pas cru. Je vous dis qu'on on nous chassait même dans des conférences. Je dis, mais écoutez, je m'appelle Jean-Christophe, je représente là. L'ONG Mbomoto, nous protégeons les bonobos dans les territoires de Bo. Du coup, vous sentez le mécontentement dans la salle, sans même attendre qu'on fasse le tour de l'étape. Je dis, monsieur, euh, vous ferez bien de sortir. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de bonobos chez vous. Mais je vous dis qu'il y a chez nous des singes de couleur noire, plus gros que les singes ordinaires. Ils n'ont pas de queue, des fois ils adoptent la marche bipède. Mais si cette description est correcte, il s'agit selon vous du domaine de quelle espèce. Le premier jour, on est arrivé, on rentre en forêt. Bon, tout le monde était inquiet parce que c'était vraiment un test. Hein? Et là, on entend les cris de Borobo. Les chercheurs veulent Quelques temps après, il me dit, euh, vieux, ils sont là. Il me dit, qui sont là Il me dit, non, les bonobos. Il me dit, venez, 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 venez. viens voir. Je, je n'ai pas besoin de les voir, je les ai toujours vus. C'est vous qui, qui doutez de leur présence. Ils ont fait leur rapport que non seulement qu'ils ont découvert les bonobos dans le territoire des bonobos, mais la zone avait la plus grande densité de bonobos connue à ce jour. Si vous regardez les maps, il y a des strongholds. Vous avez 
places like Wamba, where bonobos were originally studied, this was like the first real long-term studies of wild bonobos in the 70s up in the north. And then you have places like Sankuru, which is kind of in the southeast. Salonga represents the southern sector, and then Malebo is now the west. And preliminary estimates suggest that there are probably anywhere from 5,000 to 7,000 individuals in, in the Mayan Dombe province in this region. Uh, that, when you look at it as a, as, a, as a comparison to the whole population, could be up to 25% of the population. So in Malabo, we're really in a hot spot for bonobo conservation. Wow, that one is yeah, staring there. almost at us. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Ooh. But look at their muscles, you know, like look at their arms and their legs, how strong they are. Yeah. So you say uh, bonobo are special. Uh, what make them to what, be special? What makes bonobo special? Yeah. A lot of things. Uh, one, I mean, like I said, they're endemic to DRC, so this is the only place in the world where you can see populations of bonobos, but they're also very closely related to humans. So we share a large portion of genetic material with them. So that for some people is the most exciting thing. Uh, for me, I'm a, you know, I study and I'm interested in behavioral ecology. So as a primatologist, uh, they have a fascinating social system. And so a lot of people think of bonobos as just a, another version of a chimpanzee. And in some ways, yes, they are like chimpanzees in the sense that they live in a, they share a similar social structure. They live in what we call fission fusion societies, but they're completely different from chimpanzees. When you have two groups, big communities, different communities come together of chimpanzees, it's very aggressive. And males will often form coalitions with individuals in their group and actually kill members of the other group. With bonobos, there can be some tension when they first come together, so a lot of vocalizations, but then a lot of them have sex and it calms attention and then they can peacefully co-feed together and that's really that's a huge difference between bonobos and chimpanzees and you can see so the female that just mated she has a baby oh. so that's not reproductive sex that wasn't sex for reproduction she's mm. not fertile right now she's lactating mm. They're female dominated. The females run the show with bonobos, and that's not so common in primates. 98 or more percent of their diet is often fruit, and so that creates a lot of competition within animals, within a group, or even between groups. And when you get that competition, males can often displace, in other species, males can displace females, but in this case, females actually form coalitions with each other to outcompete males. And that's what generates a lot of this. Um, hypersexual activity sometimes. It's a way to ease tension. It allows bonobos to spend time together, feed together peacefully. I mean, it's really what allows them to live in, in what we call these peaceful societies. You know, they, the bonobos definitely take time out of their day. They take time to play, they take time to rest. You know, they take time to engage in, in social activities with each other. And again, that's the importance of, of resting periods. So I think we have a lot to learn from that. So what was, what was your favorite part of today? What you got to see with the bonobos? Because remember, you're one of the few people in the world that's actually got to see wild bonobos. My favorite part was, was uh, the last uh, activity where I saw a kind of father mm -hmm. going to pick his son and uh, the son was resisting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw that too. There's a, one of the babies. So you can see its little head poking up. And the bonobo babies can stay with their mom being carried up to five years. So, five years? Yeah, I mean it tapers off, but definitely there's a, a long period of dependency on, on the mom. Mm. So you can imagine if you have hunters coming in, and usually when you know they're killing the adults, they're killing mothers for bushmeat, but oftentimes babies are attached to their mothers, and it's the babies, because there's not a lot of meat on them, they tend to be sold to the pet trade. You know, hunting bonobos isn't a problem here, but people still hunt quite a bit, and they still use metal snares. And although they're not set for bonobos, bonobos get trapped in them all the time. Oh, oh, oh. 
can you make of uh, the, this other uh, animal that I came across near the forest where the bonobo lives? This was uh, uh, due to a poaching because, as you can see, uh, one leg is not there. So, meaning uh, this animal was found in a snare. People around this uh, forest are living, they are poor and they depend only in poaching and hunting to, to cover their protein needs. I have also another, another one, another individual, it is a monkey that I found yesterday. The guy is holding the carcass. The, the carcass. Can you imagine if this animal has some viruses? And this is among the main risk of disease transmission. When you are sneezing, the sputum that you are spreading in the forest can be eaten by the bonobo when the bonobo is feeding. Uh, and if that sputum has pathogen, that is a common route for the bonobo to get sick. And that is probably the cause of death of this uh, uh, poor Boloboko. Boloboko, Biso Buevazo Bela Puanini, Bangoko, Likamonin in Penza. People often think, you know, they romanticize the life of a primatologist and they think, oh, you know, you just go sit with bonobos all day and watch all this cool behavior. And it's like, well, actually, I'm up at 3 a.m. every morning, sometimes in the rainy season, I'm in swamp water up to my chest. I'm getting, you know, sweat bees and wasps in my eyes and my ears, up my nose and my mouth. I'm tired. You know, I'm not eating right, so I'm malnourished. Um, you know, you get a whole <laughs> smattering of problems. It's not easy. You really have to be, I think, invested and you know, I have something more than just being a job. This is a bonobo uh, that I found in the forest diet. It was a man, an adult man, called Loboko. Why the name Loboko? Because before this bonobo was, was found, snared in the forest, this uh, poor Loboko, uh, was showing cough, an appetite, lethargy, uh, no movement and changing behavior. If you want to manage the health of people, you need to know the health status of the animals because diseases are coming from animals to people and vice versa. This group is called um, Pelu group. Uh, the problem we have with this group is the respiratory outbreak that took place uh, one month ago. Uh, some of the bonobos went away from the area bonobo uh, Loboko diet, but now, by now, all the individuals are in the same group. Today I saw, I heard one bonobo coughing, so that means they, they are likely to still have sickness, but uh, the level, the frequency of the coughing is getting low, and this is very good news for us. They, we believe that in the coming days they will get recovered, all the group. But the concern, the issue, is not, we don't know where are the pathogens responsible of the disease coming from. I'm Ari, I'm a veterinarian. <laughs> uh, I come from the Robert Koch Institute in Berlin, which is the Public Health Institute of Germany. And we have a uh, project with Amy and Laurent, and also some other field sites throughout Africa, where we monitor great ape health. Uh, do you have an idea about the disease that is uh, hitting some of the bonobos at the moment? Well, obviously we don't really know yet before we've tested samples. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just was obviously some respiratory disease, and these actually do often come from humans, but 
we have to determine this in the lab. And this is also one of the reasons why I'm here right now. And Laurent did collect samples, yeah. so that's great. So we, I'm, I'm quite confident that we'll be able to find out what the cause of the disease was. On a recruté, formé un groupe folklorique que nous avions appelé Bonobo Folk. Et ce groupe a composé des chansons pour faire passer le message de la conservation des bonobos. People are coming in, they're, they're burning down parts of the area, they're burning down the forest, and savannas are expanding and decreasing the amount of corridors available for bonobos, then that can put huge pressures on bonobo populations because it can limit dispersal. Les différents cas de braconnage qu'on observe un peu partout là, c'est vrai, les gens ont besoin de la viande pour survivre, de la viande pour vendre, pour augmenter leurs revenus, mais aussi et principalement, les gens le font par vengeance. Parce que ils se sont rendus compte, se sont rendus compte que l'État a préféré les animaux aux hommes. Nous nous sommes dit, on ne va pas tomber dans ces pièges-là. Nous, nous, nous allons vers la conservation communautaire. Parce qu'en réalité, qui sont les prédateurs des animaux qu'on veut protéger Mais ce sont les populations environnantes. Patrice, vous voyez cette forêt C'est la forêt de Bonobo, non C'est derrière le village, non on ne peut on pas venir avec des armes. Il n'y a pas de cougarde ici, hein? à Salonga. C'est un parc national, non Parce que on voit les bonobos comme ici. Non. Non, je dis non. Combien de fonds sont destinés à Salonga Pourquoi continuer à dépenser des millions là où on ne les voit pas, là où on les tue régulièrement Mais les bonobos... Il n'y a qu'en RDC. Et en RDC, le meilleur endroit pour voir les bonobos, c'est ici. What some people may worry about is that as more and more people are coming and you have more presence in the forest, that can potentially lead to respiratory outbreaks, sicknesses among the bonobos. But if you think about, you know, okay, what are the alternatives? You've got a population of bonobos that are here without ecotourism. Then you have unregulated use of, or unregulated visits of people going into the forest that are sick, that are potentially spreading, you know, respiratory outbreaks or respiratory diseases to these animals but with ecotourism you can you can kind of control that you know when we go with the bonobos we wear masks to prevent any you know diseases spreading or sicknesses spreading because for us what could just be what feels like you know a minor flu or cough well that can wipe out a whole population of bonobos all the way from Nairobi, especially for this. Um, it's probably once in a, white, a lifetime trip for us, so it's really exciting. No, I mean, of course, there's lots of vines, there's lots of holes to fall in. Up and down, the terrain is, is relatively difficult. But I think that uh, a lot of people like ourselves, we have a lot of adrenaline to see this animal. So you forget the pain. Well, I think it was very nice. I mean, I think we all expect uh, the bonobos to be the, 
the hardest trekking of all of the great apes. And we got there in good time. We saw them coming out of the nest. We heard them call. And uh, in fact, the viewing was better than I expected as they came down the trees. Uh, as they were leaving, the dominant female was pointed out to us. Um, so yeah, I think we saw possibly all nine, eight, seven, something like that. And in not too far away, I mean, they're obviously in the top of uh, an emergence tree. But unless we're going to climb it, we're not going to get any closer. Um, so. Very exciting to see so many bonobos. Uh. Um, some in the trees, some on the ground. They were very busy. They had just woken up, they wanted breakfast. And the fruits that they were eating were falling out of the tree, so that was really interesting. To see. And how about you? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy because uh, especially when they come down early in the morning, mm. I could see f f five or four of them. It was uh, wonderful. And would you encourage people to come and see bonobos? Yeah, without any hesitation. A few months ago, we went to a rainforest national park and uh, the animals there were running away. Mm. You couldn't have a glimpse. Sure. But yeah, I saw the bonobo relaxing. What I would say to tourists is that, you know, it's it's so much more than just seeing bonobos. You're really getting to see community conservation in action. And when people come to visit, yes, the bonobos are the highlight and they're the center of the project, but what they also get is this incredible experience to engage with the local communities, talk to them, learn about their culture, learn about why they're, you know, why they don't hunt bonobos. If this doesn't take off, you know, there is going to come a point when, okay, well, we're doing all this, but we still don't have money to feed our families. We still don't have health care. And then that's where we really run the risk of things falling apart. Um, but for the moment, you know, we're in a really good period to develop ecotourism because there is that community interest, there is that desire to be a part of of this project. So we just have to keep sustaining it and with the best way to do that is to get people to come here and see it. Serve Congo's wildlife will be decided in places like this. If the human activities encroaches the forest, will the bonobos end up living in an island that was once a continent wide rainforest? That is the future we all have to prevent. Congo's wildlife is calling. Is anyone listening?